Hi, this is Kerry Artek with Wicked Stocks, bringing you your daily Tesla report for Tuesday, March 5th, 2024. But before I walk you through the charts, as usual, just want to encourage you to please click like if you haven't already. Subscribe to the Wicked Stocks YouTube channel. Share the content, if you would, with friends and colleagues. And check out WickedStocks.com, where we offer a full suite of both daily and weekly analytical videos just like this one. Daily analysis in the SPY and the Triple Q, that is the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100 ETFs. Weekly analysis in the S&P 500 index, the NASDAQ 100 index, the Long Bond ETF, the TLT, as well as two individual stock picks a week that you never see on YouTube. That is eight a month that cater to the three to five week swing trader out to the three to five month near term investor. We're always looking for at least 20% moves on those stock picks. And you can check out all of this for no cost for five days. We offer a five-day free trial up front with a WickedStocks.com subscription. So sign up for WickedStocks.com. Check it all out. If you don't like what you see within five days, you can cancel your subscription at no cost to you whatsoever. Let's take a look at the chart. Start with the big picture as always and work our way into the day itself. This is an eight-month channel top that stems off that July high of last year. We tested the top uh, back in late December at the time mentioning how the 250.28 formation just might contain buying on a quarterly basis and once tested you should allow for full bearish rotation back to channel support. Uh, that is now at 167.34 on the weekly chart, 168.37 on the daily chart. At the time, it was in the mid-170s, as I recall. That was about a month ago. Uh, in terms of expecting now 250.28, that is a strong word. I would call it in reach. I would call it you should uh, allow for it. You can prepare for it. The best time to prepare for that, if you will, especially if you're an options trader, is as the market is testing long-term support. Sometimes that's the most difficult time to pull the trigger because the market is at its weakest point in many months, uh, as was the case about a month ago. So as we're testing 167.34, that is the optimal time, generally speaking, to then pull the trigger on a far out of the money call, for instance, a 240 or a 250 strike out of the money call that doesn't expire for at least six months. If you've not done that yet, if you've been watching the video series for the last <clears throat> few months, you know that that was recommended when we were testing the 167.34 channel bottom. But if you haven't done that yet, no sweat, that signal would come with a weekly settlement Friday, which does not look likely as of today following Monday sell-off. But nonetheless, a weekly settlement Friday above the 204.97 descending two-thirds speed line. Sorry, that is a one-third speed line. And we do need to see that because it's an eight-month line study, it does does deserve the 1% violation threshold of 20702. So in other words, a Friday settlement of 20702 or higher does clearly indicate the low 250s and descending weekly within two to three months. Uh, that is a combination channel top and descending two-thirds speed line that can absorb quarterly buying pressures once again if or when tested. But I don't expect to see it anytime soon unless we close above 204.97. And in fact, as I've said all along, uh, the testing of that speed line on the daily chart today at 204.39 um, does uh, allow uh, 168.37 again as a three to five week target. And when I say allow, I mean that you can prepare for it. And if you did last week prepare for that, in other words, if you may have reached for 170 strike out of the money puts last week when we were in the midst of approaching, and you could even say testing the 204.39 uh, speed line, good job. Uh, if you reached for 170 or 165 strike out of the money puts at that time, uh, because th those have certainly opened up uh, as of Monday sell-off. And Monday sell-off, we can jump to the daily chart here, we did close below this 193.18 channel bottom. I'd mentioned that that may well contain selling not only on a daily basis, but into later week. Obviously wasn't to be. Having closed below 193.18 does now indicate 183.11. Uh, uh, given the heightened volatility, we may well see 183.11 today. 193.18 is your session uh, containment to the upside. This is good for day traders and even, I'd say, three to five five-day swing traders, because once we test 193.18, we can quite easily fall back to 183.11 within a matter of several days, three to five, 
at the very most. 183.11, able to contain weekly selling pressures. And as I was mentioning last week, as we're testing the speed line now at 204.39, one to two week swing traders could prepare for the low 180s, 183.11. And we might see that today. This is an area that if you're short, you can take profits, talking to one to two week swing traders, because from 183.11, we can round right back up to the 204.39 speed line within a matter of one to two weeks at the very most. But as I've been saying all along, now I break things down into different time frames because the market behaves inside of different time frames, uh, which frustrates some people, especially those who just operate in one singular time horizon, well, you're a three to five day swing trader or a three to five week swing trader. And for me to go into all these different uh, time horizons can be a frustration, but it is what it is. And um, I think it is a valid way to analyze the market. And I don't want to get too deep into that at this point in time, but I will say, uh, as I've been saying now for the last month, that once we test the 204.39 speed line, you can begin anticipating the possibility of 168.37 within three to five weeks. We're about several days into that and just about halfway down there right now. If we close today below 183.11, I think uh, you can expect possibly this week, uh, but by the end of next week at the latest, this 168.37 uh, longer term channel bottom, which we did test uh, in early February, uh, and may well test again today, I'm sorry, may well uh, test again by the end of next week if we close today below 183.11. These three levels here show the one to two week time frame above 183.11. We can round back up to 204.39 uh, and the one to two week time frame to the downside. If we close below 183.11, we can expect 168.37 within one to two weeks. But in terms of the big picture, holding below 204.31 will keep 168.37 in reach over the three to five week time frame. And once again, make that one to two weeks with a settlement today below 183.11. That 168.37 channel bottom is once again on the weekly chart at 167.34. So this is your zone of longer term support. Uh, if you're short the market, have been for whatever time horizon, this could be an area to take profits, to cover those short positions and consider going long, going long once again, ultimately back to 250.28. Uh, but, um, you know, at, if we do break the February low, by the way, we have to recalibrate this descending one third speed line because it is based in part the calculation of it uh, on the February low. So I don't want to go too deep there. Just know that the number will change, probably go a little bit higher. Um, you know, if we only take out 175.01 uh, by a, a, a minor degree, which would be 168.37. In any event, let me just mention that if we do close this week at 165.67 or lower, and that is a 1% violation to the downside of the 167.34 channel bottom on the weekly chart, we have ourselves a sell signal that I'm expecting to play out really through the second quarter, which begins April 1st. Over the following two to three months or so, I would anticipate that 9202 former long-term channel top as our two to three month objective only though if we close at 165.67 or lower on friday until then this is solid bottom picking territory let me see if there's anything i've neglected to cover and i don't think so i was going to go into the what if scenarios of closing above 204.39 like for the week and over the next few weeks but there's no need to go there right now because uh, that's not going to happen today what we have here uh, is uh, the likely testing of 183.11 over the next few days. This so long as we continue holding below 193.18. And yes, if we close below 183.11, um, if you're a one to two week swing trader, go short. If you're a three to five week swing trader, you may be short already uh, up in the low 200 area because when we were testing this 204.39 speed line, we'd mentioned how three to five week swing traders can play the short side down to 168.37. Until then, the one to two week time frame is bottom picking 183.11 and selling 204.39. If we close above 204.39, I can tell you that 222.48 becomes the next two to three week target. And over the next two to three months, we should revisit this 250.28 channel top. I'm going to leave it at that for Tuesday's Tesla. I'll be back tomorrow with Wednesdays. Please click like, share, subscribe, 
Subscribe to wickedstocks.com. Check it out. We offer five day five day free trial up front. You can see all of our triple Q and spy analysis, our two stock picks that we put out every week. Last week was Google and Macy's. I could go on and on and on, but I won't. Thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with Wednesday's Tesla.